Hey, what's up everyone, Olia here. So I wanted to cover some of my favorite sort of unique Mac apps that you may not have heard of before. Some of them are free, some of them are paid. I always think though, it's worth paying for software. You know, it's, it's cheaper than buying a cup of coffee. I mean, I don't drink coffee. Maybe that's why I can afford to pay for all this software. But yeah, some of my favorite unique Mac apps. Let's get into it. I also want to thank Tempo for sponsoring this video. Tempo is a beautiful minimalist email client for Mac and iOS that's designed to help you focus and build healthier work routines. One feature I really like is batching, which means that you don't get bombarded with new email notifications constantly. Instead, new emails are delivered throughout the day based on your schedule. This lets you set aside time to concentrate on deeper work or just more time for yourself. Other features also include a dedicated newsletter section so your newsletters aren't mixed with your other more important emails. It also works right on top of Gmail so you can set it up in minutes and even connect multiple accounts so you have everything easily in one place. Tempo is run by a small dedicated team based in Berlin and unlike the big providers, they don't sell your data to make a living. Plans start at 10 euros a month or 99 euros a year and all new accounts get a free 14 day trial. So make sure to check out Tempo. I leave a link to it down in the description below. So the first app is an app called Unclutter and this is definitely one of my favorites. When you swipe down from the top of the screen, it shows you a clipboard, a folder and a quick access to notes. And it's a pretty simple app in the grand scheme of things, but it's so useful when you have multiple windows open and you have a lot going on, um, especially with the clipboard, being able to see your clipboard history, same with the folder that you choose. So I have it currently hooked up to my downloads folder where I sort of store temporary files and images and whatever else. Just being able to have quick access to that folder wherever I am is great. And again, with the notepad as well, without having to open up the notepad, I can just write a note straight away, very, very quickly if I need to. It's a great all-rounder app and I feel like it's a good way just to add some productivity to your overall workflow. Tick Tick. So this is my current favorite to-do app. And the reason I love this one is that it has a taskbar app. So I can click on the taskbar and I can look at anything on my list or add items very quickly and easily. You can also open the main window and add a lot more detail to each task if that's what you'd like. But I actually prefer it in its most simple format where I can just access it from the taskbar and I can quickly add items, quickly tick off items, whatever it may be. Just being able to have quick access to my to-do list is great and this is how I like to do it. Drop zone. So this is another app that sits in your taskbar and it can be used in various different ways. So you can simply drop files into different folders if you like, but my favorite feature is the action section. So here you can set up different actions to do different things. So for example, I can drop files onto AirDrop and quickly start sending files to my iPhone, or I can drop a YouTube link to the YouTube downloader to download a video. Sip. So this is my current color picker of choice, especially because I do a lot of design work, a lot of graphic design, photo editing, whatever it may be. Being able to have a color picker is very useful. But what makes Sip powerful for me is that you can have different color palettes and I have a color palette with all of my favorite colors so I can have quick access to them in any app. This is a great way for me just to have consistent colors in my designs, in my branding, or if I'm working with a client, being able to have their color palette always there, ready to go, is very useful. Grammarly. So they do have a Mac app, but I actually mainly use it as a Safari and Chrome extension. And what Grammarly does is it basically helps you write better whether it be writing stuff in Word documents, in emails, whatever it may be, it will notify you of any spelling, grammar or punctuation mistakes and correct them for you. It's one of those apps that you install and just let it work in the background, let it work for you. And it's a great way to make sure that whenever you're writing anything, it looks correct and sounds correct. My Mind. Again, this is an app that's not strictly a Mac app and is more of a Safari and Chrome extension. My Mind is a sort of searchable mood board, you could say where you can save images, websites, text, whatever you like. But what makes my mind so powerful is its searchable functionality. So when it comes to adding images to your mood board, usually, you know, categorizing them, tagging them, all that sort of stuff is a lot of effort and it's just something I can't be bothered with. So what my mind does is that it can actually scan all of your images that you've added and sort of make them searchable, which is just pretty amazing how it can work. So for example, so I can just go to the search bar and I can search camera 
and it will find all of the images that it thinks might be a camera. I could search for something like a watch and it will show me all the images that it thinks are a watch. I can do the same for a car. And yeah, we'll just find any images that might look like a car. But you can see it's not completely accurate because it also has a picture of a shoe here. But regardless, I feel like I can't be bothered to always tag all of my images. I just want to quickly save stuff to my mood boards, quickly save stuff for later reference. And being able to search them by using my mind is great. I think it's well worth trying it out. You can save up to 100 items for free and then after that you start paying. But if you want to save stuff, if you're a designer, if you're looking to save inspiration, whatever it may be, I think this is well worth the money. Tech Sniper. So if you've ever found an image and it has some text on it or a document and it has some text on it and you want to extract that text, that's what Tech Sniper does. So I've gone to Pinterest and I've just found some random quote posters and I can use Tech Sniper to capture this text here maybe, like so. It's captured it and then I can go to text edit and paste that in and you can see it just pasted the text from that poster. Very quick and easy. I feel like it does what it says it does. It's also pretty accurate and it's a great way to extract any text from any documents or posters or images or whatever it might be. Haze over. So if you're someone who gets easily distracted or likes to have multiple windows open at once but only wants to focus on one, haze over is a good way to do that. So what haze over does is it dims the rest of the windows behind the window that you're currently on which is just a great way to focus on the window that you currently have open but still have any other windows in the background that you want to have just in the background that maybe you want to use for referencing or whatever you can also change how much you dim the background and you can use gestures you can also turn it on and off completely from the taskbar haze over is a good way just to focus on one app at a time and i feel like i use it quite a lot when it comes to designing something or when i'm sort of writing something, putting together something, very useful app. And then finally, Raycast. So everyone likes to get Alfred, everyone likes to talk about Alfred, and Alfred is great, but Raycast is a sort of alternative to that. It replaces Spotlight, of course, and I also feel like it's better designed. So with Raycast, you can use a shortcut like Options Spacebar to have it come up. And honestly, there is nothing that this app can't do. There's just so much. You can see the commands here. If we go through the command list, there is an absolute array of commands to do all sorts of stuff across your Mac. There's just so much, it's insane. And you can also do obviously all of the standard stuff that you'd expect, for example, you know, do any calculations, five times by two, do anything like $5,000 to GBP, you know, Great British Pounds, or maybe you wanna do it to Euros, oh wait, to euros like so it's just a very very powerful sort of all-in-one productivity tool and there's so many commands so many tools so many different things that you can do with it i feel like it's a good replacement for spotlight and if you're looking for a sort of alfred alternative i feel like raycast is one to consider so those are just some of my favorite unique mac apps i didn't want to go through the standard ones that everyone knows or things like figma adobe photoshop pixelmator pro lightroom all these different apps, I feel like everyone already knows of them. I wanted to cover some apps that are pretty unique that maybe not everyone has heard of. If you have any unique Mac apps that you would recommend, please leave them in the comments below. I'm always on the lookout for new Mac apps to try out just to boost my productivity or just to get the most out of my Mac. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for more.